Brandon Swanson. On his way home to see his parents, 19-year-old Brandon Swanson accidentally swerved off road and into a ditch just before midnight. He then called home and asked his parents to come pick him up near Lind, Minnesota. Driving exactly to where Brandon had directed them, his parents were unable to find him or his vehicle. Frustrated by the situation, Brandon said he would walk to a friend's house in Lind and had a lengthy conversation with his father while he walked. But abruptly, at around 2 a.m., while Brandon was heading toward a nightclub, he shouted, Oh, shit! His last words before the call dropped. The next day, Brandon's car was found in a ditch in Porter, 25 miles from where Brandon said he was. This would mean that Brandon couldn't possibly have been near a nightclub, so attention was instead turned to the Yellow Medicine River, which he may have fallen into. More than 500 volunteers swept the river and surrounding area and found no trace of Brandon after three years of searching. Today, Brandon is still missing. Before the famous Blackbeard had even started his career, Avery, known as Long Ben by his crew, had already been one of the most successful pirates in history. From 1694 to 1696, Avery and his crew plundered five ships, but the biggest score would come in late 1695. After a long-fought battle with the Mughal flagship Ganj e Sawai, Avery and his crew captured the ship, which contained gold and silver worth over 600,000 pounds, amounting to 52.4 million pounds today, making him the richest pirate in the entire world at the time. After distributing the wealth with his crew on Bourbon Island south of Madagascar, Avery disappeared. An enormous bounty of 1,000 pounds had been placed on his head, but he was never captured nor heard from again, perhaps living out the rest of his life in quiet luxury. Brianna Maitland In 2004, 17-year-old Brianna Maitland was shopping with her mother when she saw someone outside and told her mother that she would be right back. After finishing shopping, Brianna's mother found Brianna in the parking lot and noticed that she seemed nervous about something, but didn't ask her what was wrong. Brianna left her friend Jillian a note that said she would be right back after work that evening, but unfortunately, Brianna never returned. She was last seen by her co-workers when she clocked out at 11.20 p.m. that night and drove home alone. But something inexplicable happened during her short drive home that night. This is a picture that an unaware driver took the next morning. The vehicle in the picture is Brianna's. Her personal belongings, such as her wallet and paycheck, were found in the front seat of a vehicle with no obvious signs of struggle left behind. It's been over 10 years since Brianna was last seen. Andrew Gosden Andrew was a bright, young mathematician and lived a relatively well-off life with his family in Doncaster, United Kingdom. As far as anyone knows, Andrew didn't suffer from depression and hadn't complained about problems in his life, but on September 14, 2007, the 14-year-old seemed to have decided to disappear. That Friday morning, his parents watched him leave the house bound for school, but Andrew instead walked to the park and waited for his parents to leave for work. He then walked back home changed out of his school uniform and threw his clothes into the family's washing machine before taking his PSP without its charger and left. He then withdrew 200 pounds from his bank account and paid for a one-way ticket to London. This footage shows that he did arrive in London, but this would be the last time he was heard from. Andrew would have turned 22 this July. The children who went up in smoke. Nearly 70 years ago, a house fire consumed a large family's home amidst unusual circumstances. On Christmas Day, 1945, near Fayetteville, West Virginia, George and Jenny Sauter had just finished celebrating Christmas Eve and had their nine children open their presents before heading to bed. The entire story is quite long and full of odd coincidences. But that night, the house suddenly caught fire and George and Jenny along with just four of their children made it outside before the house burned down. The weirdest part? 
The five missing children were never found dead or alive. No signs of their bodies were found in the charred remains of the home, and a few witnesses even said that they saw the children the next morning in town. Twenty years after the fire, Jesse Sauter received an envelope in the mail with a single picture of a young man with the name Louis Sauter transcribed on the back who looked remarkably like Northern Ireland's disappeared. In the late 1960s, tensions between political groups in Northern Ireland accumulated in a time called the Troubles. Simplifying greatly, it was basically Irish Republicans versus Loyalists arguing about independence from the UK. But it wasn't the same as usual political spats in Western countries. Radical people in both groups actually became violent. Since the 1970s, 18 prominent political figures, the majority being Loyalists, have all disappeared under peculiar circumstances including abductions and vanishings. 13 of the 18 abducted figures were found dead years ahead of their disappearances, with 5 still unaccounted for. Many other less prominent individuals disappeared during the Troubles as well, but it is impossible to know who was abducted or simply chose to go into hiding as a choice. Ivona Biaczorek Ivona had just recently graduated high school and was enjoying her summer in Poland attending parties with her friends. While she was walking the 3.7 mile journey home by the beach from where she was clubbing with her friends, Ivona seemed to just vanish. She talked with her friend Adri on the way, but within a mile from her home, her cell phone battery ran out and Ivona wasn't heard from again. A CCTV camera caught footage of her walk home and nothing seemed out of the ordinary save for a single, unidentified man who police are convinced was not the suspect. Additional information and theories on her case can be found in the description below. William Tyrell Just a little over one year ago, on September 12, 2014, a three-year-old William Tyrell and his family were spending time at his grandparents' home in Kendall, Australia. At around 10.30 a.m. that morning, William and his family were sitting just outside of the house in the backyard before William's father left to find better reception for a business call. William was dressed in a Spider-Man costume and was pretending to be a tiger while playing in the backyard. While his mother and grandmother were talking, William ran around the house within earshot and was still growling like a tiger. However, the growling suddenly stopped which led to his mother getting up to check on him. He was nowhere to be found, though it is suspected that he was abducted. D.B. Cooper This disappearance is actually quite an amazing story of Dan Cooper, a well-known successful hijacking in 1972. 30 minutes into a flight from Portland, Oregon to Seattle on Thanksgiving Eve, Cooper told a flight attendant that he had a bomb. After showing her the bomb, he demanded $200,000 in unmarked bills and four parachutes to be delivered to him upon landing. He was described as a calm and suave man in his 40s and was very polite during the hijacking. His demands were met and he let the passengers off the plane which was bound next for Mexico City. While still in Washington, Cooper chose to jump out of the plane during a storm and is said to have landed south of Mount St. Helens. After this, neither Cooper or the money he took was ever seen again, save for three bundles of bills which were found near the Columbia River. Eve Ho, Kevin Lim, and Jackie Lee On August 14, 2006, 17-year-old Eve and 18-year-olds Kevin and Jackie all disappeared on the same day and were never heard from again. The weird part? They were all friends with Philip Sitt, whose remains were found five days before they went missing. None of the three teenagers had any income, vehicles with which to drive, or even passports to escape the country on the day that they disappeared. Odder still is the fact that police had not announced the discovery of Philip's remains until the 25th of August. So if the three teenagers had decided to disappear themselves due to Philip's recovery, how could they have known that his remains had been discovered? 
not one of their cell phones or bank accounts have been touched since they vanished, making this a rather unsettling case. Cameron Remmer 29-year-old Cameron was a man who was hoping to extend his medical marijuana business in California and decided to take a trip to San Francisco on September 29, 2011. After drinking heavily one night, Cameron checked his bags into the hotel and said that he would return to get them later. Cameron did indeed return, but it was three days later and he was in a miserable state. Eyewitnesses state that he was wearing two separate shoes and was rambling before leaving the hotel, once again leaving both of his bags. That was the last time that anyone saw him, but there have been reports of Cameron being seen walking around as a homeless vagrant. But what was in his bags? 60 vials of medical marijuana and $30,000. Brandon Lawson. After getting into an argument with his longtime girlfriend on August 8, 2013, Brandon left his home in San Angelo, Texas to visit his father's home. 45 minutes later, the 26-year-old called 911 and through very incoherent talking said that he had run out of gas near Bront and needed the police. Out of gas. There's one more here. I'll take the to the woods. Brandon's brother and the police arrived to find his truck, but no sign of Brandon or his keys. Brandon's brother called him to ask him where he was, but was only able to hear that he was 10 miles up the road and bleeding before his cell phone cut off. Many have tried translating the 911 call which can be found here, with the general consensus being that someone had chased Brandon into the woods. Apparently, the assailant caught him during the 911 call as someone else could be heard saying, yes to the operator's question of if an ambulance were needed before Brandon said he needed the cops and ceased talking. Do you need an ambulance? Yeah, no, I need the cops. Flannan Lighthouse Mystery 115 years ago, on December 15th of 1900, Ducat, Marshall, and MacArthur were in charge of keeping the lighthouse on Flannan Isles working that December, but vanished before Christmas. Upon inspection of the lighthouse, a half-eaten meal was found inside, along with two of the three coats missing from inside the lighthouse. The clocks inside had also stopped. The lighthouse logbook's last entries may have been added after the trio disappeared, but stated the following. December 12th. Gale, north by northwest. Sea lashed to fury. Stormbound. 9 p.m. Never seen such a storm. Everything ship sheep. Decat irritable. 12 p.m. Storm still raging. Wind steady. Stormbound. Cannot go out. Ship fast sounding. Fog horn. Could see lights of cabins. Decat quiet. MacArthur. Crying. December 13th. Storm continued through night. Wind shifted west by north. Decat quiet. MacArthur praying. 12 noon. Gray daylight. Me. The cat and the cat prayed. December 15th, 1 p.m. Storm ended. Sea calm. God is over all. There was no storm in the area at the time, but a ship did pass the lighthouse noting that its lights were off on December 15th. Jacob Wetterly, St. Joseph, Minnesota, October 22nd, 1989. Jacob, his brother, and their friend were bicycling back home after visiting a convenience store after renting Tom Thumb. While riding back home, a Caucasian man wielding either a small shotgun or a handgun stopped the trio and told them to lie in a ditch while he threw their bikes away from them. He asked all three of the boys to tell him their ages, after which he told Jacob's younger brother to run toward the woods without looking back or he would be shot. He then closely looked at Jacob's face and his friend's face before telling Jacob's friend to run to the woods without looking back as well. Jacob was last seen being carried by the man into the wooded area that morning.
Joan Gay Croft. On April 9th, 1947, one of the 10 most destructive F5 tornadoes of all time swept through towns in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, killing 185 people and injuring over 700. Joan was four years old at the time, and her hometown of Woodward was hit by a tornado as well, killing her mother and critically injuring her stepfather. Joan and her eight-year-old stepsister Jerry were placed into the basement of the local hospital due to their minor injuries. Later that night, two men dressed in army khakis entered the hospital and asked for Joan by name, indicating that they knew her. Once finding her, one of the two men picked up Joan and assured her that they would come back for Jerry later. No one in the small town hospital recognized either of the two men, yet they were able to walk out of the hospital with Joan, who was never seen again. 